Greg, man, welcome to the show. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on board, bro. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's uh, man, it's it's awesome being able to speak to 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 some of the West Side guys, and I mean. When we think back to the fucking legends, man, like you, you, you are well and truly up there, like fucking world records for for, for days, crazy, crazy numbers, <laughs> man. And like, I, appreciate that. I, I find it really interesting because I, only you guys understand the journey of what you had to go through to get to where you are and right. how your training has adapted through the years. I mean, just mm -hmm. listening to you, bro, your training has just been a complete roller coaster from when you first started off to yeah. to going to West Side and then leaving West Side and everything that's followed after it. So, like, for you, when was the fucking moment that you realized that you caught the bug? What was that? For you. So I was about 14 or 15 years old. My father brought home a computer from work. And back in those days, the early 90s, computers weren't really a thing that was seen in most houses. So it was kind of a big deal. It was right at the advent of the internet. So, you know, my first week was looking up, you know, porn. And, of course. Uh, hang on. Sorry for that. <laughs> and uh, after that, it became, you know, I started reading about bench pressing and, and, and lifting weights. And then it shifted into West Side Barbell. And, uh, and, uh, from there, you know, I read an article about Louie called the mad monk of powerlifting and it, it did it. It was like, that's it. That's the dream. Um, so from about 15 years old on, until I was about 25, it was an obsession. It was, it was all I thought about. And it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like, like, it wasn't like something I wanted to do or like, you know, like a triples plan. It was an obsession. Like, I, I, I stopped caring about school or about sports or girls. It was just basically 10 years of just obsessing. I went back. Uh, I, I helped my dad move out of his house, uh, out of his apartment into a house, probably about four or five years ago now. And all my old uh, college notebooks were in a box. And, and so I kind of opened them up. And it was just numbers upon numbers and adding up squat, bench, and deadlift thousands and thousands of times and then pictures of the west side symbol you know the, uh, the dog and, the barbell. <laughs> and just create my father looking over my shoulder he's like no wonder you did so bad in school <laughs> <I'm> like, <"Yep." laughs> you know but it worked out yeah so it was it's just, it's it's been there since i've been a little kid you know and oh and it wasn't just even west side it was like it was ohio it was, it was like i see ohio on tv and i stop and watch like i had this weird image in my head of ohio that was kind of like the Disney World of strength, you know, that everybody there was huge. And honestly, <laughs> it wasn't that far off. It really, it's a different world out there, you know, especially at that time. Yeah. You know, it was just, it was just, every, you know, people there are fucking monsters. Like my first night there, maybe my second night, I went to a bar, I had a few bucks, went to a bar to get a beer, and uh, I watched this fight take place in there. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, I've watched probably 5,000 bar fights. And it was these two giants. They were probably both six, 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 seven. And just destroying each other and i was like holy shit where am i <laughs> what and have i got myself I, into know, here <laughs> it's just a this is a tough place you know so i responded very very well to that and uh yeah now we're here <laughs> yes yeah, it's, it's it's interesting though isn't it because it's like i think when it comes around to this sport and the the athletes that it produces i think you kind of have to have that that mentality that switch yeah. you know what i mean like I don't think that there's no bullshitting. There's no there's no way around, you know, perfection of technique. You can't get around that grit, that edge, that mentality. Right, that, right, right. And I think, right. you know, it, it shows, you know, talk, you talking about Ohio there, it's like, man, well, that's the foundation that, that brought the pressure to build Westside. You know what I mean? Like, so that that's just the Absolutely. collective of all of that pressure in one place. And it's like, yep. it's a little wonder so many freaks you're of nature right. come out of there, bro. It's you're just you're insane. Right. It's but, just very, very, very tough people. You know, and one of the things we've seen, oh, God damn, my phone sucks. One of the things we, uh, one of the things we've kind of seen is that it's sort of shifted into this, the sports, you know, shifted quite a bit from when I came up where now it's mostly, you know, college kids and, and very normal people, you know, sort of trying to pretend to have that attitude. And it's really not something you can fake. You know, I, I see right through it in two seconds. You know, and for me, it was something I had to adapt to and learn from because I'm not from a place like that. I'm from a very little town, um, you know, where policy wasn't really a thing, you know. Uh, so I had to learn how to, to I had to create that in my mind and kind of really change everything about myself when I got there. And it was something that I sort of expected was going to have to happen. Um, 
but it was honestly much easier than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a very, very hard change. And, and, uh, and, you know, the thing about it was it worked is that everybody there hated me so much that it was like, it was, I had to, I had no choice. I had nowhere else to go. It's not like there's a backup plan. It's not like I call mom and dad and say, Hey, I fucked up. I'm coming home. You know, it was, it was this or nothing. It was either this or die. So that sort of made things a little easier for me. Yeah, it's it's like that weird like cliche like if you want to win the war then you got to burn all the boats, you got to burn all the yeah, bridges because exactly. it's like motherfucker, you haven't so got true. a choice. You got to fight your way yeah, and get yeah, out yeah. the other side because there ain't exactly, no turning back. Exactly. And I, you know, it, exactly. it's it's so so interesting because you know, you you think about West Side, you think about the mentality, you think about the people that the system mm-hmm. churns out, and it's mm-hmm. like, dude, that there, there are just people that that have that. Not necessarily, maybe like five, ten percent under what you had, but just didn't have that edge to make it to where you right. were. And that's what they do there. That's the whole secret. And honestly, the, the training methods, in, in my opinion, there's nothing overly special about them. There is, but there isn't. But they're made to be done in an, an incredibly competitive environment, you know. And when I see them being run, you know, in, in gyms and stuff, I'm like, you guys just don't get it. You're not doing it right, you know. You're doing it right, but you're not doing it right. You yeah. Know? It's, it's, there's gotta be shit talking and pushing each other and be calling each other names and shit. You know, that that's the part of it that, that makes it work. Yeah, it's you know, like it's like literally nine tenths of a bar right. fight without yeah, the actual exactly. fighting. Like it's just exactly. instead of punching you, each other you, in the you, face, you lift the fucking weight. Right, right, right. When you're in the training, I mean, you can cut the tension in the room. You know what I mean? It's it's just so fucking aggressive, and nobody's gonna back down. You know, and, and all the rules and the science kind of go out the window. It basically becomes a fist fight with weights. You know, it just becomes just just trying to kill each other to beat the other guy down, and that's what does it. It's, it's not it's not the max effort in, in, in the speed days. It's the it's the aggression put forth in that, and that's that's what I'm trying to teach people. And nobody nobody really gets what I'm saying. And it's a hard it's a hard thing to understand unless you've seen it. Um, but you know, I try to recreate that on my team um, online, and I've sort of been able to actually pretty well do it. You know, it, but it's very very hard to teach. You know that sort of uh, life or death struggle, that that kill or be killed mentality, because you kind of either again have it or you don't. You know, you you're in a place where you have to have it or you're not. Yeah, and so 100%. there you have to have it or you're leaving. You know, you just want you're just not gonna be there tomorrow. Yeah, well, that, you know, that's the thing, isn't it? Day. What's that? That's the thing, isn't it? It's like if if you don't take that challenge, if you don't step up to the plate and do it, regardless of however the fuck your body feels, everyone's right, gonna be so like, I, "Hey, Greg, there's a door, right. bro." Right, right. You don't get to back down there. You, you know, you get one of my first, uh, one of my first couple of weeks there. I, uh, oh shit. Sorry about that. That's cool, man. We'll, uh, we'll just cut it. It's cool. The no, joys I of see you now. I couldn't see you before. <laughs> Hang on, sorry. Now I see you. Ah, Sick. so yeah, anyway, one of my first weeks there, I went through this brutal squat workout. And I was like, when I got there, I'm like, I'm not as strong as these guys, but I know I can't work them. So that became my, my thing is I would work harder. I would do more sets. I would get there early. I would leave later. And I realized that was the only way I was going to make it. But we went through this brutal squat workout. And I laid down on the floor afterwards. And Louie got down next to me. He goes, if I ever see you on the fucking floor again, you're out of here. Do not show weakness. And, you know, I was like, okay. You know, I get it. I get it. But listen, man, we're going to go down to my car, right? I got to plug my phone in. Yeah, so cool, dude. No worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, oh, head down there. That's cool. So it's... um. <sighs> Yeah, man. Like, I think, and I've heard you spoke about it before in terms of in terms of West Side and and the mentality there and how it does chew up people and spit them out. And it's yep. it's interesting. Like, you were there for like five years, right? In total. Yeah, five or six, a little over five years, like five and a half, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, and like yeah. obviously, obviously, when you start out with all good intentions, your body's going to be be feeling relatively good. But I think, mm-hmm. and I know you've kind of spoken about it before, by the end of those five years, like your body was, your body and your mind, more importantly, was oh, just churned up to shit. Dang. Yeah, no doubt. And honestly, still today, like, I, I still have a lot of trouble, um, sort of with daily, not daily stuff, but, but being around lifters who aren't quite doing what I what I know should be being done or what I was taught there. And so it makes me come off as a complete fucking asshole. And I, and I probably am, but it's like, you know, that was, that was my job there. I was basically the executioner. You know, you weren't doing what you're supposed to. I was on you, you know? And, and so it kind of created this, this mindset where, you know, I, I, I have trouble leaving that. I have trouble, I have trouble being a normal person, you know, in society. And 
you know, because you never really learn how to shut that off. You know, what I mean? <laughs> and you see it too with guys that left, Brandon Lilly, you know, same thing. Yeah. And we talk about it a lot, like that same, you know, you still carry that mentality. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's beneficial in some ways, but in some ways, like, you know, now coaching, like I'm a local, you know, I'm a local policy coach now, you know, at least part time. And so I have trouble, like, you know, I'll be training like a, like a housewife, you know, I mean, who's 20, 100 pounds. You know, I'll freak out because she didn't do something I wanted to. I'm like, okay, great, calm down, calm down. This is not West Side, calm down. You know, or they'll call out because they're sick. I'm like, they're fucking sick. Like, who gives a fuck? You know? You're there on the door, like, do, 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 do. Get out of bed, exactly, motherfucker. Let's exactly. go. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. So it, it makes it really, really tough. But um, you know, it's uh, you know, as far as, as far as you know, as far as the mentality to be great, that place has that down like nowhere else on the planet. Yeah, I feel like, like the, the the more I listen to, obviously never being there or being in that environment or understanding what it's like, you know, you only have what you can kind of listen to. And I think that the more stuff I listen to, it almost sounds like Westside needs to be used as like a peaking tool. Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? So like rather than Absolutely. being like, I'm going to commit my life five years here, it's like, right, I'm going to go over to Westside. I'm going to train there for like six to nine months. We're going to get right. some fucking crazy numbers up. And then I'm going to go and right. hit a few PRs, take some time right. off and recycle like that. Like if you had your time over, would you do something like that? Or would you suggest someone doing something like that? The only problem is for a normal person to get in there and do that, it's going to be very, very difficult. You're not going to last, you know, you, you just won't last. No. You know, you have to, you have to be tough. Louis is not going to sit there and tell you, tell you you're doing a good job or, or what you're doing is working. He's going to tell you everything you're doing wrong every day of your fucking life. You know what I mean? Like for me, like, you know, it wasn't like he was sitting there going, Hey Greg, you're doing a great job. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like beginners sort of respond to that a little more than, than, you know, advanced lifters. Yeah. But I think it'd be very, very difficult for somebody not to get their feelings hurt very quickly there because he's not nice. You know, he's yeah. not going to be nice to you. No, but it's, uh, it's, I think it's that thing, isn't it? You know, you you can only get so far and like i think there are lots of people that will say like you know it really depends on the coaching style and uh, well you right. know it's like no if right. someone is there telling you get that fucking weight up you have right, no right, choice right. and they're right. basically holding a metaphorical gun to your head you're like Absolutely. i'm probably going to get that weight up Do you know what i mean the weight up. right 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 and for me i mean he, he made it very very known to me the entire time i was there that if I fucked up, if I missed, if there was a misstep, I was gone, you know? He would bring people in to beat me, you know what I mean? Play all these mind games with me the entire time. You know, pit me and Luke Edwards against each other the entire time. It, is, it was fucking brilliant. It was fucking brilliant. I admired the shit out of it. But a normal person probably is going to crumble, you know? For me, and, and I'm not saying that I'm not a normal person, I am. But Greg, I really you're not a normal me. fucking person. You are not a normal person, bro. Shut the fuck <laughs> I mean, up. No way. <laughs> You're out as well, man. No way are you normal. Jeez. Yeah, but it's, it's I mean, it, it, it's definitely not for everybody. And it's funny because sometimes you see guys come in who had great genetic talent. You know, could it could have been great, but they would just be like, ah, uh, no. I brought a kid in once. There was a kid. I, I actually worked at a gym. I was a personal trainer at a normal gym, LA Fitness. Um, and I brought a kid in. And I had watched him bench 500 pounds for three and uh, just missed 585 right at the top. And I was like, oh, shit. So I brought him to West Side. He lasted like 15 minutes. He's like, oh, fuck this place <laughs> and walked out. He still walked out, got his car and left. Yeah, he was like, nope. <laughs> nope. Just like the shit so, talking I mean, or the very, environment very or what? For sure. You know, like... he's a football player. I think he might have even gone pro for a minute. But Damn. yeah, it's just, he was just like, no, you know, I don't need this right now. Yeah, I <laughs> Because they're gonna fuck with you, you know. They're gonna fuck with you. They're gonna want to. They want to break you. You know. They don't want you in there. You know. Yeah. Well, also, it's it, in a weird, twisted way. It's kind of like they also don't want you to be working at full capacity because then it right. means that they, they can don't. beat you and shit on you, and then they can right, claim the exactly, glory. Exactly. So it's like this weird little fucking power dynamic going on the it's whole time, bizarre, dude. Man. It's, it's like it was so. So it's kind of funny too. When I first got there, my first week at Westside, um, nobody was in there. Because they're, they're all getting ready for the Iron House Classic. And so I was the only guy in there. So it was me and Louie's neighbor, who's like this old guy. You know, he's a former like, bodybuilder or something. And so we're in there training. And Louie didn't tell me why nobody was in there. But I was like, this is West Side. So we, we train. Me and this guy, we train. <laughs> and then we go drink Miller Lights. And we, we, we barbecue broths on his grill. And I was like, this is not what I was expecting at all. 
And then the uh, then the following week, everybody came back, and I was like, "Where the fuck am I right now?" I'm like, "I right, holy shit!" You know, I, I was, I, and I won't lie. I mean, I was literally fucking scared. These are some scary fucking men in there, you know. So <laughs> it was something that took some time to get used to, for sure. But then you become one of them, and there's no going back at that point. <laughs> yeah, dude, and it's it's uh. It's like a weird, twisted family, or at least it looks yeah, like exactly. it from the outside. Like, it's so funny, but it's like, you know, you get any of you guys from West Side together, and it's just like reminiscing on the old times, like as yep. much as it ate yep. shit, as so much true. as you threw up, as much as you tore, as much as you broke, <laughs> you're smiling and laughing the whole yeah, time. Exactly. Hey, man, remember the time that it's like, you just forget, you <laughs> yep. forget about all the bad shit, though, shit. right? You Is only that... remember the good stuff. Yeah, right, exactly. Because when you're there, everybody hates each other. It's yeah. not a friendly place, but it's not like it's not like we were hanging out after. Hey, what's up, like, Greg? We were there for three hours fighting the entire time. You know what I mean? I'd be fucking with Luke Edwards the entire time I was in there, you know, trying to break him down mentally. You know, he never did, but I try. I get him going. I would get him so mad. It was hilarious. I would just fuck with him and fuck with him. And uh, you know, for me, like Luke was the one guy in there who could have probably beat me, and so I couldn't let that happen. So for me to beat him, I had to do it mentally. And most of my, my strength was mental. Uh, I got a pretty good story about that, too. So Brian Carroll, you know Brian Carroll? Yeah. He's a monster. So yeah, him and I yeah. uh, competed against each other a lot. And we, we became pretty good friends from it. But um, there was a comp where him and I were competing, and I had a good squat and a really shitty bench that day. And he had benched me by near 100 pounds. And so going into the deadlifts, he was ahead of me by, you know, 60, 70 pounds. And so I'm like, fuck, he's going he's gonna to beat me. You know, we pull about the same. He's going to beat me. And so Louis calls me over. He goes, listen, he goes, Brian's going to ask you what you're opening at. You're going to say 840. Okay. And I was like, sure. So Brian came over and said, hey, Greg, what are you opening at? So I go 840. So I watched him walk over to the desk and change his numbers. So he, he opened at 800. I think his best pull was like 785. So he goes over there, says opener's 800. He tears his fucking bicep off of the opener, so I went and beat him. He still has not forgotten that. But at those levels, at the top levels, it's a chess game, you know what I mean? Because he they can get could have gone either way. <laughs> he, he, will, he still talks about it every time I talk to him. <laughs> Fuck so, that. Brian, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I just wanted you to miss not tear your bicep. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's the difference, though, is it? It's like, it's like in other sports, it's like, oh, man, like, sorry I caught you with my studs. Like, sorry I caught you with my elbow. At this point, it's like, right, bro, right, sorry right. I forced you to rip your fucking muscle off of the bone. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And part of me, for like a split second, I felt bad. Then I was like, you know what? I gotta do what I gotta do. You know, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna win. I need this money. So, you know. <laughs> just step up on the podium and just take that first place. You're just yeah. like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so bad he was so bad he's still so bad about it but yeah it was uh you know it, it was a wild time but during it like it wasn't fun it wasn't like i was like yeah i love this you know it was it was a mindset of i'd wake up in the morning and i would think about winning and i'd go to bed that night thinking about winning you know so it it made life there very very difficult and for you know i had a, I had a relatively normal job i was working in social work and um but I couldn't apply myself to work because I had so much shit going on in the gym all the time. And so it made things tough. But, you know, it was it was an amazing experience, if anything. Yeah, but like, it's so interesting, you know. And again, you think about it now compared like where you were in that kind of really interesting like heyday yeah. over at West Side and yeah. kind of where we're at now. But in terms of with athletes, you know, like the fact that you're still having to contribute X amount of hours today per, per, per work. Whereas now it's like you got so many of these guys, you know, the fucking joys of social media and influencer yeah. stuff and all that sort of. It's yeah. like you guys were doing back then what even guys today aren't doing, which is right, fucking right, right. working a full time or a part time job yeah. and then getting up and then doing a full time or a part time job's yeah. worth of fucking lifting every single week. Every day. And that is what and people do not understand. Day, so yeah. Yeah, it was, it was brutal. It really was. I mean, but, you know, it's it's what I wanted my entire life, and I had to remind myself that every day, that, you know, I had pictures of Chuck Vogelpohl, John Stafford on my locker, you know, everybody, everybody you're gay. I'm like, <laughs> I have my wall. So I had a picture of all these guys on my wall. My father one day, he goes, my father never went in my room, but he came in my room to talk to me about something. He looked around, he goes, hey, can we talk? I was like, sure. He goes, do you like those guys? And I was probably 14. I'm like, yeah. He goes, like, he's like, 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 like those guys? I'm like, I don't know what you're asking me. Goes, do you find them attractive? And I'm like, why are you asking me right now? You know, and mind you, this was the 90s. It was a very, very different time. Like, 
you know, but he was, he was, you know, he, he thought something, you know, that wasn't, that wasn't true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love you know, that. That's how it was. You know, no, nobody got it. Nobody understood it. You know, still don't. My mother's always like, you should have been a teacher. And I'm like, I make, I make more, I make three times what a teacher makes. You know what I mean? Like, like, I'm not, like, why? Why would I go be a teacher? And I don't do, I don't even work that hard. Like, my life's pretty easy, you know? Like, but, but it's the way it is, you know, nobody gets it. No, no, no your family gets it. So I was like, when are you going to grow up and get a real job? I'm like, I make more money than you. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's, it's it an is, interesting you know? mentality yeah, though. <laughs> like, and I'm I'm sure you. Why? Well, I mean, I don't know, don't know how you found it, but like, I mean, I I wasn't. Uh, you know, my, my ed- education was pretty good. I got I got pretty fucking good grades, but I knew like from like six, seven, eight, I was like, there's no way I'm working in an office. There's no way right, I'm damn. sitting in a fucking cubicle picking damn. up a phone every single day. Like, do I just damn. cannot do it. I have to be doing something active. I have to be outdoors. Yeah. I have to be interacting with people. Damn. Like, yep. I just don't Damn. have that skill set. Like, if I'm in that space, I'm like, okay, I'm here. Six yep. hours later, I'm probably going to kill someone. What <laughs> yep. do you want me Same. to do? <laughs> I, I tried it. I tried it. You know, after after West Side, I went through some really dark times. And so I was working jobs, you know, very, very normal jobs. And I would last, like, two weeks and just walk out, you know. I would just walk. I wouldn't even say I wouldn't even quit. Just walk out. You know, I couldn't do it. And that that was the hardest time in my life was was after that. And, you know, I really didn't know what to do with my life. And so I, I honestly never wanted to coach. Coaching for me was like the last thing in the world I ever wanted to do. But I get old, you know, so. Is that because you wanted okay. to be an athlete so bad? What's that? Is that you like you didn't want to be a coach because you wanted to be an athlete like forever? I want to be 25 years old and break world records forever. But unfortunately, you don't get to stay 25 forever. And so I had to find a way to still be competitive because that's the one thing that I have over, I think, most people is a competitive edge. So at first I was like, well, I'll just apply it to something else. You know, I'll sell gym memberships or I'll, I will sell, I'll sell car parts or whatever it might be. You know, and like, it just wasn't there. I didn't care. So I would go in and have an amazing first day. And then by day two, I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> You're like, so, it's yeah, not filling the void. The way to. <laughs> yeah. Like, so it, you know, it's interesting that you say, you know, as soon as you left, after you left West Side, that was like a really, really dark time for you. Is yeah. that because you you felt like you had that void in your life and you were like, there is nothing that I feel is like fulfilling this like need yeah. that I need inside so, of me? So what happened was I left. So I left and like less than a month later, I had a massive stroke. Yeah. And so that was, was like you know, 2010? that took away. What's that? It was like 2010, wasn't it? Yep, 2010. Yeah. Yep, it was uh, Mother's Day 2010. Yeah. And so it was only a few months after I left, and it just, it, it created, it took a, a small hole and made it into a giant hole, you know? So it was like, I basically lost everything, you know? My entire life up until that point had been designed by the fact that I was strong, you know? And then, then no, no longer am I strong. I can't lift up my right arm anymore, so I can't make a fist. So it's like, everything is gone now. What do I do? And so I basically just drove around the country and moved and was broke as shit, did a lot of horrible things to make money. And, uh, yeah, and, and made my way here to Portland, Maine. And, and things just started kind of working out here. So I've been here since. <laughs> I love that, man. I absolutely love that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really, really interesting. And I think, you know, for a lot of athletes, especially top-level athletes, like there comes that time where you're faced with, uh, like, a, a, an injury or something in your life that, like – forces you to put the brakes on like something right. you didn't see coming you were like oh it's okay it's just, like you yeah. know maybe i'll take a break maybe i'll take a break and then like you yeah. haven't got a yep, fucking exactly. choice and it's like it's, it's so like interesting about boss yeah it's, it's just like but then it's know, weird because you're sat there with scared. nothing but your thoughts as well so like you're just sat there you can't do anything like especially early stages of anything it's like you can't move you can't really like do anything super right. active it's like yep. it's like being yeah. in your own it's like being a prison it's been exactly, exactly worse. I've been in prison. It's worse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's just pure misery every day. You know, wake up and be like, oh, God, I'm still here. You know, so at that point, you know, I was ready to go. But I'm so, so, so glad I hang, hung on because my life's so fucking amazing right now. You know what I mean? I couldn't be happier. I'm way happier than I was at Westside. You know, my life is, is pretty fucking amazing. I get to teach powerlifting. If you told me I could have done this at 13 years old, I would have been like, you're out of your fucking mind. You know what I mean? Like, But it's amazing. It's it's incredible. So, yeah, I mean, it's been – the best years of my life have been like the last 
five or six years, honestly. Um, you know, and, and the, I, I love, I, I actually, I love where politics is at now. And I know a lot of people from my generation hate it and like, oh, fuck social media. But I love it. I love seeing what these guys are doing. You know what I mean? I love watching Daniel Beltrain. You know, I can you know, talk to him and say, yeah. you know, tell me he's a pussy. It's great. It's <laughs> amazing. You know, and, and these guys now are so fucking good. It's crazy. They're so much better than we were. But we were tougher, so. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Because it's like, now everyone has the capability to see like all of those just like random genetic freaks that yeah, have like lived crazy. under a rock for like 20 years and then they hop online and they start putting like 400 yeah. kilos for reps and you're like what it's the insane. fuck is yeah. going on and the kid's like yeah, 23 crazy. or something and you're like okay i'm like oh, i'm yeah. like 26 and i'm like i, sh- I should just quit now that's it right, I'm, right. I'm never gonna be that fucking right, right, strong right. like just close it's instagram so just disconnect your gym membership yeah. fuck it Grab a tub of Ben and Jerry's and head to bed. Yeah, no doubt, man. It's crazy. (laughs) I have guys on my team, you know, nobody's ever heard of, that are squatting like 800 for 12. It's insane. I have a guy on my team that's squatting 800 for 12. It's like, what what the the fuck? fuck, You know? And these are guys that nobody's ever heard of, you know? I have four guys on my team that squat 900 pounds. No, five guys on my team that squat 900 pounds. And nobody's ever heard of them. You know, they're they're like, you know, they're they're unknown. Say, you have 400 followers on Instagram. And these guys are like, well, these guys would have been the best in the world 10 years ago, you know? These guys would have been the Chuck Fees, the fucking, you know, the the, the, the Gary uh, Gary Franks, you know, 10 yeah. years ago. But nobody's ever heard of them because it's relatively common now, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's, it's like been popularized, isn't it? It's, it's almost like yeah. powerlifting is almost sexy, dare I say yeah, it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny, you know, it's, it's, it's hilarious. And I really get a second win from the West Side movie, you know what I mean? Like, I, I sort of have resigned myself to the fact that nobody's ever going to know my story or really care, and that was okay. But, like, then that movie came out, and it was like, fuck, you know? And, and there was a lot of stuff there that I forgot about, honestly. Like, a lot of footage there that I, I couldn't even tell you where it came from. <laughs> but it, it's kind of cool watching that. Like, it was, it was a huge thing. And honestly, when I shot that movie, I didn't think anyone was ever going to watch it. It's not like I, I thought it was going to go to Netflix, you know what I mean? Like, I thought it was going to be some small time, like, oh, you know, dude. maybe shown on some weird channel, like, in 10 years. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I wasn't really watching what I was saying, you know? So, I went with that last line in the movie. Dude, you were being My grandmother you. watched it. <laughs> my grandmother watched it. My mother called me up. My, my, my mother calls me up, and she goes, I don't know why you have to talk like that. Matt Wedding doesn't talk like that. <laughs> 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 why so, can't you yeah, be more so, like that polite yeah. wedding boy <laughs> yeah Matt Winnie was always a good kid <laughs> I absolutely love that that's so funny getting yeah. told off by your own, own mum yeah, about mom. it <laughs> Call me my dad loved it though my dad thought it was hilarious <laughs> that's so funny it's so funny yeah. it's um you know it's it's really interesting because I think you know and I think there there are probably a few guys that are, are in similar thought patterns to you in terms of mm-hmm. You know, they spent a while at, at West Side. They did some fucking incredible things, but it isn't until they left and they maybe started prioritizing their own body, their own health, yes. their own functionality, that now they're realizing like they have so much of the muscle memory and almost so much of the power and stuff ingrained in them from those years that yes. just taking that like half a step back to work on them has realized that it's made them probably a better athlete now than they actually oh, no probably question. would have been. Do you know what no I mean? No question. No question. So what I basically do, the way I, I'm basically designed, what I do is I watch Matt Winning, and I just copy what he does. Because you know? he's, he's, he's just there in his Patreon money. channel, just like, yeah, exactly. hey Matt, what's going on, dude? Exactly. <laughs> he, he's always making the right choices. You know, I realize that for, it, that's honestly the reason he gets thrown on the West Side. Yeah, I've but heard you spoke about what he was man. doing, following, because he was very successful at what he did. You know, he made things that were very, very hard look easy, but he was also very very good at making very very difficult scientific principles understandable so right. he would take me aside after and explain things to me and i'd be like okay that makes sense to me now it didn't before but it does now the, the thing that the big thing for me at west side was i had to actually toned down my training i would go in there like a fucking wild pit bull and it wouldn't stop i would go forever like they'd be we want to do, they'd do eight sets of two i would do 25 sets of two you know what i mean like i would just keep going and going and going and finally, Matt's like, listen, you're not doing yourself any favors, you know? It's not making you better. And so when we, when we did that, that's when I became great, was after all that, you know? It was actually cutting back. It wasn't adding stuff. And that's one of the big things I see now is that everybody wants to add shit to the program, you know what I mean? Because everything else in life, if you add something, if you add more work harder, you get better. 
but not so much in this field, you know. You're just beating yourself down more and more and more. So yeah, my, my workouts were fucking insane. I would do like I would take a hundred pounds on a squat day and do a hundred reps with it after a workout for no good reason. We would go, why are you doing that? And I'd say, I don't know, <laughs> you know, it feels good. <laughs> like I would have to throw up. If I wasn't, if I wasn't throwing up, I wasn't working. And so that was the, the major change I made was actually working less hard. <laughs> That's so crazy. That's so crazy. Like it's <laughs> it's uh it's it's so fascinating to, to kind of see how people approach different things. So like obviously yeah post kind of west side and and, and you changing things and i i kind of have, have heard you spoke about it before that obviously when you left the west side in terms of like the conjugate system itself was kind of a time where you took a step back from that yep. and i yeah, think absolutely. like a it, it's like it's it's that's got to be like a, a kind of scary time as well because like conjugate isn't just like a training system it's like its own cult Do you know what i mean it's like it's yeah. dude yeah, a, a, like yeah. a, everyone is about it so when you kind of like renounce conjugate as your training style i feel like that probably kind of like isolates you and alienates you a little bit because everyone's like Yo, hey fuck out, you yeah. man you're not on our team anymore like yeah, right tons of it and I, I was feeling it for people here you know what i mean like you're a fucking traitor i'm like the well, fuck you <laughs> you were to west side you know what i mean like, yeah, I this isn't a bloods and crips twice. shit man we're lifting you know, weights like, for fuck's like, sake you, you don't understand you're not part of this like get out of here you know you bet 400 pounds in bed shirt you're like yeah come on like, you know, so yeah, I mean, you know, but I, I had to, I had same, you know, same as Brandon Lilly, you know, and, and Matt Wenning to a point. What Matt Wenning is doing is a very, very different version of conjugate, you know, it's yeah. his own version. And it makes a lot more sense for a raw lifter. You know, the problem with conjugate, not problem per se, because Louis, Louis was very, very vocal about it when I was there, but you have to be at a certain strength level to start training that way, have a certain amount of muscle mass, be a certain, you know, and things like that. And have a certain amount of recoverability, which is genetic. So what I see happening in a lot of places is that everybody's doing conjugate. It's like these 190 pound guys that look like soccer players. You know, it's like this, this is not for you. Maybe in five years, but do some volume, build some muscle mass up first, and get into it. When I was at West Side, when I went to West Side, you know, I, I had a 940 squat that was pulling around 800 pounds. It had 600 plus bench press in gear. And uh, Louis was like, nope, you're too small. You're built like a swimmer. You're going to do bodybuilding. So I spent my first eight months there bodybuilding, you know, to build muscle. So I went from like 230 to like 260. And then I was able to actually do the programming as, as written. But it took a long time. And that's, that's a, a, you know, Louis back in those days was very, very, very vocal about that. He was like, if you can't squat 700 pounds raw, you can't bench 400 pounds raw or deadlift 700 pounds, you don't belong doing West Side. You need to be doing something else for a while anyway. And it doesn't need to be a forever thing. But you have to build up into that that capacity, you know, because if you're not if you're doing maximal singles and you're using 300 pounds, you're not doing enough volume. There's not enough weight there to actually be doing it with your body. So you watch these guys doing it underdeveloped and, gir and girls too, and it's like you're not doing enough work. You know, the 135 pound box squat with reverse bands isn't doing anything. So, but it's a very very hard sell because the thing about conjugate is it's fun. It's not very many rules, you know, and you can kind of fudge the rules too with your own you know your own liking. So, you know, it's, it's, it's something that's very, very easy for coaches to jump on and say, oh, I'm a conjugate coach. No, you're fucking not. <laughs> no, you're not. You're like, which style of conjugate? Because right yeah, now there's right, like exactly. fucking 25 exactly. subclasses of whatever right, the fuck exactly. they think it is. Right. And when, you, when you're at Westside too, like I would do something, I would do something strange, like something different, something that was kind of against the grain. And they would, they would come over and give it a name. You know, he, he, he'd apply, try to apply science to it and give it a name. And I was just making shit up as I went along. It's not like I was like, okay, we need this. It was like, I want to do this. I can't tell you why, but I want to. And literally, come over and give it a scientific, you know, a scientific uh, label. You know what I mean? It's just like. You, you know, come so, up with I shit. Mean, he makes it logical. Done. Yeah, he makes it logical, right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, we, we, yeah, so I mean, but it's, uh, you know, it's it's more complex, I think, than people think. And Matt Wenning, you know, if you're going to get coached by conjugate, with the conjugate method, Matt Wenning is absolutely the one to talk to. You know, he uh, he really understands it. You know, from a, on a level that I think honestly, Louis doesn't even quite understand that. Um, he, you know, he understands how to do it raw too. Where what I'm seeing with raw lifting is, is, is it doesn't work. You know, it doesn't work if for most people. The vast, vast majority of people it doesn't really work because you're not doing enough. So he's created the winning warmups, which are pretty amazing and a great way to get volume. Yeah, first. dude, I, I use them as well as my clients. Yeah. So I went through last year with him training, 
and he had me do 100 reps with 125 pound dumbbells, you know, dumbbell presses, then 100 lap pull downs, and 100 tries to press downs. They were maxing out on bench. You're like, what the fuck? You know, I lost at least 100 pounds there, you know what I mean? But it makes so much sense, you know? So that's my view on it. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's awesome. I'm really, really thankful to have Matt on the show. Um, oh, was he on it? Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he was on awesome. probably about, I think, about 14, 15 episodes awesome. ago. Um, obviously amazing to chat to and just super, yeah, super yeah. intelligent. He's, he's, he's amazing, dude. It really is. His story, too. I mean, he grew up, uh, you know, he grew up very poor in Indiana and worked his fucking ass off. He's the hardest worker I've ever met. You know what I mean? Very, 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 very smart, too. Um, very driven. You know, he was, he was, he was, he had more money. Like, he was wealthy as fuck when I got there. You know, I'm leaving my fucking car. I'll go over to his apartment. It was like, holy shit, this is like a fucking kingdom. You know what I mean? Like, I remember he had the AC on all the time. So during the summertime, you know, I'm living in my car. I would drive out there and stay at his house on his couch, you know? Because it was just so much more comfortable than, than living in your fucking car. He had a big TV. I'm like, holy shit, you know? Fucking pizzas in his fridge. I'm like, holy shit, this is life's living like, right here. What is this? Yeah, what, what is this? Fuck? I'm living off fucking Nutri-Grain bars in my car. And he's, he's getting like, you know, he's, he's ordering Chinese food for a restaurant. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah but it's amazing though isn't it because it's like no matter like that's what i love about this and that's what i love about lifting as well like yeah you've got to be a little bit sick and twisted but it's like there is no like one demographic do you know what i mean like right. as long yeah, as you've absolutely. got that like little switch in there and you can go to yep. that place and you can get yep. it done it's like it's really interesting to see like the technician the scientist just yes. the nuts shit crazy guy like <laughs> it's like and how yep. everyone approaches it differently but we all get the same thing done at the end of the day. Like, that's what yeah, I love right. about it, dude. It's so and cool. That's definitely the coolest part. I have a kid on my team who's been on my team from the beginning. And he's kind of like this dorky, um, you know, not not like the exact opposite of what you think to be a polisher. I mean, he's, you know, on a, on a world basis or national basis. I mean, he's not great. But I, I train I, can, I, I train people out of a very normal gym, you know, a very, you know, normal type gym with, you know, very normal people. And so a kid, there's a kid in there. He's a big jacked up kid, you know, probably 6'3", 250, you know, tanned, uh, you know, great, he's a good looking kid. And he was only there pulling 315 for sets of five. So he's got three wheels on there. He's kind of struggling with sets of five. <laughs> and I have my guy next to him, he's a goofy, kind of lanky kid with glasses. And he pulls 405 for 10 with no belt on. And the kid looks over, I can see him ball, like, what the fuck? And then he just walked out of the gym, you know? I was like, hell yeah. So if you saw my post the other day about genetics, that, that's what I was referring to. It cracked me up. I, I told the kid, I told him, I was like, did you see what happened? He was like, no. I'm like, he walked out because you beat him. And he goes, he goes, should I go talk to him? You know what I mean? Like, like he wanted to apologize. <laughs> oh, man, I love that so but, much. Yeah, it's, you know, it's funny. I mean, you know, not, he squats and deadlifts about 500 pounds. But that's, you know, for a 22-year-old kid with really absolutely no genetic potential at all, that's pretty, you know, pretty impressive. So. Hell yeah, I'm always that's like, insane. I'm always like, how does it feel to be the strongest guy in this room? And he's like, I don't know, you know, like it's having computers in his brain. <laughs> so, You're like, yeah, oh, it's, it's, it's wild. It's fun to watch. Yeah, and it's <laughs> I I think it's it's I it's really interesting being an athlete. But then I think when you are then a coach, I feel like it it just changes the game again because it's like oh, crazy, yeah. your passion is like reinvigorated because you can then yeah. see like. Oh man, and you must have it as well. Like whether it's at meets or in the gym or whatever, like that moment that it clicks for like your client or they hit that PR right. or they do whatever, and like the whole world. fuck, dude, it's like it's crack. Like world. if you could put that in pill form, it's like yeah, man, that yes. was insane, insane. Yes. And it's like it, it, it just it goes to show that it's so much more than just like the sport, like what oh, no it does doubt. for people, how it brings people together, like the connection no it has. It's absolutely mad, man. Absolutely oh, it's amazing. Mad. It's amazing. It, it's really unlike anything else, too, because it's something you can do, you know, from the time you're five years old, basically, to you're 100, you know? So you're going to see every age range, every economic, um, you know, you're going to see rich people, poor people, you're going to see doctors, you're going to see criminals, you're going to see, you know, every person on the planet represented somewhere or another in the sport. And that's really what I love about it. You know, I, at this point in my career, like, I'm so much happier to go the cops and talking to people than I am competing, honestly, you know? And there's a guy on my Instagram the other day. He's like, he's like, you know, I'm tired of watching you put up these old videos and stuff. Do something. And I'm like, bro, I did something for 20 fucking years, man. You know, I'm I'm just trying to make money now. You know what I mean? I want to put my daughter through college. You know, he's like, so it's like, it's, 
but it, it's hard. It's a very hard thing to explain to people, you know. But I'm like, you know. But if those I'm people don't get it, like you, you, you can't force people to understand it. Like I understand right, where you're, I, I understand where you're coming from. Like, but it's like for those people that they they don't they just can't comprehend it and they never will and right. it's like dude you're just you're basically just smacking right, your head right, against right, the right, fucking right. wall do you know I, what i mean the game has changed you know my hustle's changed you know i won enough you know and this is like so you know i'll still compete again probably and i'll still probably win but you know i don't i don't need that to gratify me anymore now my team competing my team winning is all i need it's even more you know i, I feel that even more um, you know, so it's it's really yeah, an incredible feeling. It's so and I have interesting. A giant yeah. fucking team. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of people on my team. I think we have nine hundred people on my team, maybe more. I don't even know. Yeah, it's getting so fucking huge now. Damn. You know, and uh, you know, we have a, we have a physical therapist on my team who does all the mobility stuff and all the crap I don't understand. We have a, a uh, Jay Ashman. We have a nutritionist on my team. Um, you know, so basically, what I try to do was create a team and hire people on that helped me along the way, you know, like that, that, that did things for me, I but basically that. give it to these people for free. And so what I did was I said, Hey, come on my team. You can sell whatever you want to sell. You can charge whatever you want. I don't care, but just help us out. And so they, you know, both jumped to the chance to do that. And it's been amazing what these guys have done, you know? So I, I'm basically at this point, a small part of my team, which sounds kind of funny, but I have guys on my team that are better coaching than I am. You know, I have a best friend up here. who's a firefighter and he is just, he is, he was, He's a freak. I mean, he's, he's got a 500-pound bench, drunk free, you know, a 700-pound squat and deadlift. He's been, he's been training for two years. You know, this is somebody what? who absolutely has that ability. Yeah, he's been training for two years. Yep. Fuck. He beat me bench pressing. He beat me uh, about two weeks ago when we were training in his basement. He beat me. And I was like, you motherfucker. Yeah. Damn. Drug free. A lifetime drug free. You know, as, as and really, you know, he's a he's got a you know, wife and two kids, a beautiful house, great, great father. And just, just, like, when I met him, I met him in college 20 years ago. Yeah. And I was like, yo, where do you train at? And he was like, I don't know, I don't lift weights. And, like, you don't lift weights? How do you, you know, 240 pounds and ripped, you know, six-pack. I remember he was drinking a bottle of vodka in the corner with no shirt on. And I was like, I like this guy. So I went over and started talking. And he had no idea. Like, he absolutely never, I don't think he'd ever touched a weight in his life. You know, just a freak. And so I'm like, where'd you play football? And he was like, I played soccer, you know, which for you guys is football. Yeah. He's like, I played soccer. I'm like, you played fucking soccer? Like, you look like an NFL fucking linebacker. All of this fucking yeah. potential. Like, like what are you up, doing? You grew up way, way up in northern Maine. There's nothing there, so there's no football, you know? So it was, he played soccer and basketball. Fuck. And he's a fucking freak in nature, you know? But, you know, for him, it's sort of a, you know, it's sort of, it's a fun, it's a hobby, you know? It's a fun yeah. thing to do. But had, had he applied himself the way I did 20 years ago, he'd be way better than I was. He's way better than I have, you know? Never injured. Just a freak. He's about 295, 300 pounds, and built like a fucking gorilla. He's like a gorilla, you know. And it's just, it's crazy. You know, watching him with weights, it's perfect. But it's, you know, he's he won't he won't take shit. You know, he's like I'm absolutely against steroids. Like, I don't care if you do. I don't care who does. But it's, it's a promise I made to myself a long time ago that I would never do it. <laughs> I'm like, fuck your promises, man. Do it. Get on a fucking world stage. You do it in two years. And he's like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'll stick to fighting fires. It's yep, fine, man. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's way safer. He's an amazing guy. But he he's smarter than I am too, motherfucker. But he takes a <laughs> role, coaching role on my team, you know what I mean? He's a great coach. And he's also much better with people than I am. He doesn't freak out. I freak the fuck out. I go crazy. I start threatening everybody. Everybody then like twenty people quit, you know what I mean? But he so he's a he's a lot more level headed than I am too. So he should probably just take my job, I quit. <laughs> That's it, yeah. Just renounce all There's of your somewhere. everything yeah. to him. That's yeah. so funny, dude. But it, yeah, like, it's it's really interesting, isn't it? Like, I think when you've been through like what you've been through, and you understand like what you could have benefited from more as an athlete, and how you could have been kind of guided and stuff. Like, it's cool because this now gives you the opportunity to do that with everyone moving forward. Right. Absolutely. And I think it, it means that like everyone's training approach and their style and their ideologies all differ slightly differently depending upon the journey that they've been on. Right, and like exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see like, do you find obviously like, I know a lot about your past and a lot about the shit that you got up to at West Side, man. Like, <laughs> do you find that like, you as a person attract people very similar to you? Or are you finding that like, people are coming to you just because of the numbers and the knowledge both. and the fame yeah both. a lot of, yes both 
you know, what I tell people all the time when I get my team is, listen, you know, this we're, we're, I'm here to make you competitive. We're not here to play West Side Barbell, you know what I mean? You're, if you're, you know, and a lot of people don't stick around because a lot of people think of me coaching conjugate. And my system is, is very, very, very difficult. It's, it's all, you know, it follows all the science, but I do things a little bit differently. I push people a little bit harder. And so a lot of people quit and immediately jump on a conjugate system, you know, because it's, it's you know, for, for most people, conjugate is pretty easy. You know, working up to a max single or wherever you want to work at isn't, isn't overly difficult, you know. But doing, you know, doing, I, I do something called short breaks. So what I found, and I used a lot of my own training coming up, was that you don't have to go heavy all the time. So what I people do is take a smaller percentage, 50 to 65% of the rep, one rep max, but do it, do a certain amount of reps, but cut down the break periods. So I still use pull up and charts to design the, the pro, design the you know the rep scheme. Yeah. But you're gonna be doing a shit ton of reps. So you're gonna rack the bar, count to five, take it back out, you know, do as many as you can, put it back, and it's fucking brutality. So a lot of people don't want to stick around, but the ones who do, you know, I've had I, the success has been insane. You know, we guys that three years ago were totally 1,400 pounds, we're now totally you know near 2,100 pounds. You know, and just crazy shit like that. But you gotta actually work it. But it's a lot easier to do a reverse band bench press, you know what I mean? Especially if you're weak. If you're weak, if you're weak, you're just doing nothing. It's easy. You know, you got to be strong to make to actually do anything because you're just not doing enough volume. There's not enough weight there and really not enough practice. And the reason it works so well at Westside is everybody there is genetically freaky. You know, everybody there's a fucking freak. And everybody in there has been in the sport forever. Like when I got there, I was 25, and I was the youngest guy in the gym at that time, I think. Dave Hoff. Dave Hoff was younger. But, you know, these are guys that were just made to do this shit, you know? So... Yeah, but they're also it, it, it's also a case of that if you're sat there uh, at West Side and everyone knows that your fucking favorite is a reverse band bench press, yeah. if you then try and hop underneath that, they're going to be like, "Fuck you! No way right. you're doing nope. that!" Like, no, we're changing exactly. the bar out. We're going Swiss bar. We're going stabilization. Yeah, you don't like. yeah. But and that's the difference, though, isn't it? It's it's so funny because it's like this is the thing that like really infuriates me about like the whole conjugate thing is it's like conjugate as it was then in 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 the the gym there Mm -hmm. nothing is the same because it's because of the mentality that's in there you have to go through the cycle of all those different bars that you don't fucking like rather than like hey we're gonna canvas squat again because there's no one here to say that i can't and i'm just gonna chuck bands on today exactly you're like no you need someone there being like no you're exactly right (laughs) You're exactly right. The thing about conjugate too is it makes some really fucking good uh, Instagram videos. You know what I mean? You <laughs> some really cool shit. I saw a guy yesterday. Bands going this way. Bands going that way. He had bands on the side. He had chains over. It was insane. He had bands. It was crazy. It looks really cool on Instagram. But it's like, what are you actually doing? Is that actually doing anything? <laughs> yeah, you're like, there's actually you know? two hundred and twenty so, pounds of tension on that bar right now, and yeah, that's right. it. <laughs> I mean, we, we we would definitely do stuff like that when I was there too. So I can't really talk much yet. I remember one day, one of the great stories. Me, me and uh, AJ Roberts, yeah, um, did it. We we decided we were we were, we were sort of uh, mouthing at each other the entire day. I can't remember why, but we were having some dispute or something. And so he was like, "All right, let's go head to head." We were talking. I think we were talking shit to each other about who's better. He yeah. Was like, All right, let's do this shit then. I'm like, all right. He's like, he, he knew I hated good mornings. So he's like, good mornings. <laughs> yeah, I did. I'm like, okay. I'm like, but we're only going to use bands. There's going to be no weight in the bar, just bands. <laughs> it was so Dude, stupid. Dude, in 2020, crazy. that would be like the biggest hit on Instagram for sure. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. I mean, it looks like a fucking rainbow on there. We had like 40 bands on each side, just adding bands. Do We do one rap, add a band, do one, oh. you know. It went on for hours. I beat him. I remember I won. <laughs> but it felt like, it seriously felt like my spine was going to tear on my back. You know, I was 100% convinced on the way down. As I was going down, I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> shit. There it goes. And I came back up, and I was like, fuck. I remember reaching back and trying to feel if it was still in there. I mean, there's no way I didn't tear right on my back. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah like, I mean, can I still feel my feet? Can I still feel my yeah, legs? Right, right. <laughs> my paralyzed. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was wild. But, you know. And that, that's the part of West Side that was the most fun. You know what I mean? Like, I love that shit. I love competition. You know, I love going head to head. And so for me, it worked out really well. But you see a lot of guys come and go, you know, through the years. Yeah, I, I think it's just one of those things, isn't it? Is is it's uh, unless you have like the perfect genetic potential, you yeah. go through the perfect loading cycle, you enter yeah. the system at the correct training age and training weight. The likelihood that you're going to sustain, you know, a period of like, dude, I even think like the just five years there that you did, like, 
That's fucking insane. Like, I just don't <laughs> understand how people can make it that These guys far. Are for thirty years. Yeah, but but you also know that they're not going to be walking when they're like 55, <laughs> 60 as well. You know, they're on like their second hip replacement. They have right. no it's biceps. Train wrecks. It's crazy. I remember one of my, my aha moments out there. There was a guy named, what's his name? God, I can't remember. He's a great lifter, like in the very, very early 80s. I don't, I'm not even sure if he's connected to West Side. Steve, Steve, Steve something. God, I can't remember his name. But Louis always said I lifted like he did. He was kind of intense. He was insane. And he was grind out weights. And so I was at a cough in Cincinnati. And Louis's like, hey, there's a guy you remind me, remind me of. And I kind of looked over. There's a kind of a group of people over there. I'm like, which one? There's a couple of you know, big jacked of all the guys out there. He's like, him. I'm like, who? He's like, the guy with the cane. I was like, oh, my God. That's going to be me. You know, I, was like, I don't want to be that guy at all. You know? And so that sort of kind of forced me to change my whole mentality. Right at that moment, it was like, it was like, wow, that's definitely gonna be me. He was like fifty, like he wasn't that old. I was like, shit. oh shit. You know? It was oh, like, damn. what was his name? God, I can't remember. But yeah, so you see funny. pictures of him in the eighties, and he was like a really good-looking guy, super jacked up, you know, tan, looked like a bodybuilder, a six hundred pound bench press, and like just, I was like, no, I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> please no, Luke. Please no. Please don't let yeah. it get like that. <laughs> And so that was one of, honestly, the most important moments I ever had at Westside was that. It was like, I got to be smarter with what I'm doing here. And so, and that's sort of right at the time, too, where I got really, really good. Because for me, getting good, it meant dialing it back, not not pushing forward, you know? So, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. I'm so glad that happened because I'd probably, I'd probably be in a wheelchair by now if I kept going. <laughs> you would probably be the man with the cane at this point. Yeah, yeah. that would be right now, you know? But the thing about it is, too, is I, I feel great. I feel amazing, you know? I could definitely go out around a mile right now, no problem. I still, I still, you know, duck a basketball. Like, my knees are a little jacked up. Other than that, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty healthy. And do you think that's just because you've taken that step back and spent so much time now, like, reinvesting into, like, yep. your mobility <laughs> and stretching and doing all that shit yep, that absolutely. you probably yep. should have done when you were at Westside, but no one ever did? <laughs> I spend way more time doing that now than I do training, man, you know? I train three days out of every ten days. But I'm doing something every day, whether it be a walk or stretching or mobilizing or, or just light lifting, you know, something every single day just to keep moving around, you know. I feel like if I stop, I'm going to die, you know. So I, I'm always doing something. You know, it's, it's important, too, is something that we sort of – we don't think a lot about as lifters is that we got to stay active even on off days, you know. Even if it's a little bit of cardio here and there, just get that fucking body moving. Get that heart rate up a little bit, you know what I mean? Dude, it's, it's, it's so weird. If, if, if I'm on, like, a rest day, I'm like – I get itchier than normal to get to the gym. Yeah, I'm like, oh yeah. it's like when someone tells you that you can't have something and then all you want from that point is the thing that they told you that That's you can't have. Bro. <laughs> it's so funny. And you're like, so man, no, everything hurts. Today, so I, I, I decided, I decided yesterday I was actually going to rest more, you know, and, and do, you know, basically just a light walk. I'm losing my mind. It's been two days. I'm losing my mind. I've done it twice. So I've gone the, I went the entire last year without a day off. I was doing something lifting wise. I did it for 365 days straight. And I found that it really didn't, didn't help that much. You know what I mean? And I found I was actually stronger before probably because I was recovering better. So now at this point, I'm trying to take days fully off of weights, not be in the gym and do other things. So after we're done here, I'm going to go for a walk, but it's like, I don't really want to do that. It's not really what I want to do. You know, I'd rather be in the gym lifting weights, do reverse hypers and do hand raises and you know, shit like that. But it honestly wasn't a major, wasn't a very helpful thing for me, you know. I felt a little, I feel, I feel good. My weights have kind of moved backwards, probably from that. So, I'm yeah. gonna, now I'm going to do this and see what happens. Yeah, and, and, and that's the thing, isn't it? I think it's, I think, you know, when you first start off training, when you're in your peak, you know, no matter where you are, your body is going to adapt to, to yes. what you're doing and what you're feeding it. And, you know, I think that's the really interesting thing about the, the gym as well is that it's just a constant adaptive process. Yes. Like, yes. depending upon what you're looking to achieve, it's like, yeah, your goals now aren't to be hitting, like, world record totals necessarily. Right. So the the things that you're, you're doing aren't necessarily associated with that. But it's like, right, okay, when you go back, you know, five, 10 years and it's like, okay, well, everything starts, you know, sorry, 10, 15 years. It's like, everything's completely different because your focus is just on right. breaking those world records. So why am right, I right, right. wasting time mobilizing? Why am I wasting time doing all of this sort of stuff? Right, and I exactly. could be fucking lifting. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Louis, Louis, 
I remember one day that Louis threw a foam roll on the ground. He's like, get on that thing and roll your back out. And I kicked it. I go, I'm here to break world records. Don't roll around that fucking thing. You know, put some weights in the bar. He was so mad. He used to get so pissed at me all the time. But yeah, I mean, he understood that. He really, really did. Probably before most everybody else in the world understood it. Like, he, he understood mobilizing. He used that term with me. And, um, you know, I wasn't I wasn't about it. It wasn't something I want to hear about, you know. He's like, yeah, these Indian clubs do this. I'm like, I'm not fucking doing that. No. <laughs> no. You know? It's like, He's chuck like, another 45 on and let's weed. go. Yeah. yeah it's it wasn't, fucking weird. It wasn't something I wanted to do. <laughs> you know, it, wasn't, it definitely was not something I was going to do or wanted to do. But I recover very quickly. It's sort of the thing that's, that made me good is that I can recover very, very fast. So I could do, like, I was basically maxing out four days a week there. You know, I, I was fuck. I wasn't really following the standard protocol here. Everybody else, you know, Cause I, it, honestly, I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. It's not like Jeez. I had any sort of scientific background. I I just just did what I wanted but, to, you know. But by twenty five, I could. <laughs> yeah, but this is also like the thing as well. It's it's so interesting, and it's like because maybe you didn't have like the capacity to like fully understand what you were doing you didn't have the capacity to understand like the fucking negative uh, negative things associated with it so you weren't even thinking about it like and i love that it's yeah and it's so cool yeah exactly see i also too never thought about being injured it never crossed my mind until i had i've had one injury in my entire career i tore my quad off in it band in california a few years ago but up until that point, it never crossed my mind. I never thought about it. So that was a big part of it, too, is that I was fearless. I had no fear under weight. It never, you know, weight, I, you know, get on a thousand pounds. It never crossed my mind. Hey, something really bad could happen right now, you know? And I just didn't care or just didn't think about it. It never crossed my mind. It was, I would see it among the older guys, like the older lifters a little bit. Yeah. Like a little, 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 little apprehension there. And, you know, that's, you can't have that. <laughs> so, it really, it really, really is a young person's sport. You know what I mean? And like I tell people, you really have your 20s to be great at this because by the time you're 30, you're probably going to have a family. You're not going to be able to do the cycles you want to do at that point because health is going to become important. And then I just hit 40 a week ago. I turned 40. And now it's like, fuck me. Like, I got to change everything I do now. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, it's cool, though. It's, it's been a great cycle. It's been a great evolutionary, you know, evolutionary, you know, thing here with myself yeah. as a human being person in lifter i've learned so much and a lot of my learning too has been from watching other people completely fucking up you know what i mean you know I, i've watched a lot of guys that you know 37 38 39 have massive heart attacks and i'm just like i don't want to be that guy so i never actually got that big either that was another thing for me is i never wanted to get huge i never wanted to be you know i never wanted to have those health problems you know yeah. i had a stroke but it really had nothing to do with any of that stuff it was something totally different it's a genetic thing i have um, but you know, I, I, I was so scared to be 300 pounds, you know, and Louis wanted me, me to be 300 pounds. I was like, no, I'm not going to do that, you know? And, uh, so yeah, but and thank you God know, you didn't you dude, because that, you might not fucking be here right now. If you did stop right, learning exactly, up to that size, exactly. you know what I'm saying? It's... You, know, you see stuff there, you see health problems there all the time. You know what I mean? I'm like, I don't, I don't want that, you know? So for me, it was always, I always wanted to be a little bit healthy too. So I always say relatively lean. I, I still eat pretty healthy. Um, you know, I sort of thought I've sort of eaten the same way basically since I've been 14. I started out originally wanting to be a bodybuilder. So I started eating, you know, six to eight times a day and it's stuck around now for the last 20 years, you know, yeah, 27 years. Chicken and rice, chicken and rice. <laughs> yeah, chicken and rice, you know, meal prepping. Although I meal prep much less now because I'm busy, but you know, back, back in the old days, you know, it, 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 twice before meal prepping was cool, I was meal prepping. <laughs> you know, but now I'm making enough money where I can eat out every meal. So <laughs> I'm, at, you know, I'm at a restaurant five times a day, you know what I mean? I go to like the same two or three restaurants every day. Like you know my name, they know what I want. They're, they're ready for me when I walk in. I go to breakfast at the same place every morning, seven days a week. You know, yeah. So they know exactly what I'm about to do. So it's great. Yeah, it's like the the day that like you're sick or whatever, you get a call on your phone. You're like, are you not are you not coming in you know, to pick yeah, up your yeah. lunch? That it, you're usually yeah. here every. Is everything okay? Yeah. <laughs> I went in the other day and I want I want to try something different. So I ordered something different. And the, they had to run into the back and stop the cooker making my, my breakfast. <laughs> so I did it one day, and they came in the next day. I'm like, what do you want today? I went back to what I was eating before, and they were so surprised. They're like, we don't I even fucking know you anymore. <laughs> threw off the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so interesting. Man, um, uh, like, 
it's been fucking awesome talking to you. I want to wrap it up real quick because yeah, I, sure. I think it's an awesome point to, to hop off on, like, especially kind of wrapping up you talking about, like, your your entire evolution of, of a lifter and as a human being. I like to end uh, the podcast the exact same with everyone because I love getting everyone's uh, opinion on it. So I want for a second for you to imagine that you are stepping into a time machine and you're hopping back in time. You're hopping back in time to visit your younger self, like 10, 11, 12 years of age, very influential. You've got your whole life ahead of you, lots of big fucking decisions to make and lots of mistakes to make along the way. You get to spend a few moments with with your younger self. You get to leave them with, you know, a, a mantra to live by, a bit of wisdom, knowledge. Like, what do you tell your younger self to help them get through all of the shit you've had to get through to where you, you are today? You know today? what? Honestly, I, I truly believe I did it right. The good things, the bad things, the mistakes, the fuck-ups. You know, what I would say is I would say don't listen to anybody. Listen to yourself. Listen to your heart, which is exactly what I did. You know what I mean? And so I just, just, just do what you think you should do. You're right. They're not, you know? And that's as crazy as that sounds. I hit my 12 year old, I look at my 12 year old self, my little chubby 12 year old self, and say, do what you think is right. Do not listen to them. Fuck your teachers. Fuck your family. Fuck your friends. They're going to try to talk you out of everything you want to do. But fucking do it, man. You're going to make the right choices. You know, that'd be it right there. I love that, man. <laughs> well, fucking ace way to end it. That, Greg, thank you so much for coming on the show, awesome, man. It's brother. been an absolute hey, pleasure. It, it's, I could speak to you for hours. You've got stories for, for, <laughs> blast, for days. Brother. It's <laughs> awesome. I uh, I hope you'll come on the show again at some point and, uh, and uh, we can Absolutely. catch up. But uh, yeah. Blast, brother. Yeah. Take care. Have an awesome day, dude. Thanks, man. You too.